Hi everyone, it's Christina from the DIYMommy.com and today I wanna to share with you four beautiful garden DIYs you can make with dollar store supplies. The first one I'm going to show you is a faux enamel wear light feature for your garden. I found this watering can at Dollarama here in Canada and I'm just spray painting it with white spray paint. If you find a white one, perfect. I could only find this turquoise one so I sprayed it with some white. Next I'm taking some black latex paint, it's just extra latex paint I had on hand and I'm painting the top rim of my watering can. So I've noticed that enamel wear isn't perfect. There's splotches, there's wavy lines. So don't worry about making any of this black part of the painting perfect. It can be vintage looking just like enamel wear. So I'm just using this antique enamel wear bowl for reference and I'm noticing that it has these black splotches on the bottom of it. So I'm adding some more kind of splotchy parts onto my watering can to make it look like it is a vintage enamel wear watering can. So I'm also adding some black to the bottom of my watering can. I'm adding some more splotches to the side. I'm adding some black to the handle and just kind of have fun with this and make it a little interesting piece for your garden. I'm also adding black to the bottom rim of my watering can and I'm going to add some black around the spout as well. Okay, so you can get these fairy lights at Dollar Tree. They're just a really short string of fairy lights. And what I did was I put a folded piece of thread through the spout of the watering can like this. And then I put the string light around the thread and I pulled the thread through. This is one way that you can thread these lights through the top of the spout of your watering can. Uh, however, I noticed the Dollar Tree fairy lights were quite short, so I opted to use a very long strand from Amazon. I will link to it in the description box below. The lights do not fit through the holes of my watering can, so I'm showing an option B on how you can attach them to the spout. I'm basically just folding them in a few sections and then I'm making a little tiny hook at the end of the folded section of my uh, copper fairy lights, just like I'm doing here, and then hooking it inside of the holes of the spout of my watering can. And this has stayed. I've had this up for a week now, and the, this has stayed in the watering can. So this is another option where you don't have to thread the wire lights all the way through the watering can. Then I'm wrapping the rest of my fairy lights around the spout of my watering can like this and I'm placing the battery pack inside. I found this garden stake at Dollarama. I thought the bird on top was really cute. I didn't alter it at all because I liked that kind of brown color. Then I'm hanging the watering can off of the garden stake and then I'm just arranging those fairy lights that I folded all around this plant that I have here in my front flower bed. This plant is called a bird's nest spruce and I love it. It grows so well up here in zone three. Then I'm just turning on the lights here in the battery pack and this is how my faux enamel wear feature looks. It turned out so cute. I love how this watering can looks and I truly love how these copper fairy lights coming out of the watering can look like a sparkly waterfall all over my plant. I especially love how this feature looks at night and I'm gonna show you how it looks at night right here. It lights up the whole front flower bed so beautifully. The next DIY I want to show you is a tiered herb planter. I found three sizes of galvanized buckets at Dollarama. I found a large one, a medium one, and a small one and I'm just putting a hole in the bottom of each bucket with my drill. And this is going to allow water to drain out of the bottom of the buckets. Next I'm filling up each bucket with some potting soil and I'm stacking them just like this one on top of the other. So you can put them a little bit into the soil in the previous bucket or you can rest them on top, it's totally up to you. Next I'm taking some herbs and I'm planting them into the bucket. So the rosemary, which is the tallest plant, I decided to put in the top bucket so it had some more height room and then the rest of the herbs I'm just planting all around the bucket. I decided to use the original plant name stakes that came with these plants from the greenhouse and put them beside each plant. However, you could go to Dollar Tree and get some of those cute chalkboard stakes and use those instead. Again, that's totally up to you. And then when you water this planter, all of the excess water should drain out of the holes that you drilled in the bottom of the planters. 
I think this is a great way to keep my herbs on my front porch so I can easily grab them when I need to for dinner. I think this turned out really cute and I love the farmhouse aesthetic of this particular DIY as well. The next project I want to show you is a garden sign. I'm using Rust-Oleum chalked paint. This is a chalk style paint and I'm just painting this sign that I found from Dollar Tree. Yeah, this one was Dollar Tree. I just used one coat of paint on this because it has a really great coverage. Then I printed out this on my computer. I just used Word and on the back side I'm just scribbling a whole bunch of pencil on it. This is a really inexpensive and quick way to transfer words onto a piece of wood. Then I just turned this on top of the uh, sign and I just made sure it was all centered. And then I went ahead and traced the outline of the words with a pencil. You could also use a pen for this as long as it's nice and sharp and gets the uh, pencil transferred to the wood sign. So I'm just using the word garden. I know it's not very creative. You, you could come up with something more creative, perhaps garden sweet garden or welcome to my garden, anything like that. After I traced the words, I took a Sharpie and I traced the outline. I just like the Sharpie tracing the outline of my words because it makes them look nice and crisp. I have a hard time getting that nice crisp outline of words with a paintbrush and paint. So I like to just start with a Sharpie first. Then after I outlined the words with Sharpie, I'm just taking some, again, leftover latex paint in a kind of a charcoal color, and I'm filling in the letters on my sign. So you could use whatever color of paint you want, just make sure your Sharpie matches the paint if you like that matched effect. Then after I painted the whole thing, I let it dry and I'm painting the edges of the sign as well. I'm kind of wanting to match that enamelware look of that first light feature I made with the black and white, so I'm going ahead and painting along the sides of the sign. After everything is dry, I'm just taking a sanding sponge and sanding over the letters and the edges because I really truly love that worn vintage look. If you don't like the worn vintage look, then just don't sand the sign. And here's how this cute garden sign turned out. I just took a screw and my drill and I screwed it to a scrap piece of tree branch. I think it looks super cute in our front flower bed. The final DIY I want to show you is a birdhouse feature. I found these birdhouses at Dollarama and I'm using this gray stain to paint them. So you could leave them natural or you could paint them with a different color of paint. Again, use your own creativity and make them match your aesthetic and your garden. So I'm just staining them with a foam brush and this gray stain, making sure to get all of the parts of the birdhouse that it's showing. And then after I stained all of my birdhouses, I took a rag and I'm wiping off the excess stain. I wanted these to look weathered, so I really like how the gray stain looks on these and makes them look like they're a little bit antique and older, and it just gives these dollar store bird houses a little bit of a custom look. So after I stained all of these and they're all dry, I took some leftover latex paint in a really pretty gray blue color and I'm dry brushing it onto the stained bird houses. So the dry brushing technique is basically just putting a tiny a little bit of paint onto a dry brush, hence the name dry brush, and you can blot any excess paint paint on a paper towel or in my case on this uh, drop cloth and then quickly brushing it over your piece. So you just want really light strokes. You don't want to put any heavy strokes onto your pieces here. And it gives lots of texture, uh, lots of interest to my birdhouses here. It also kind of adds to that weathered look that I'm going for. And then I'm just taking some tree branches. We had cut down some dead trees in our backyard and I'm cutting them to three different lengths. So mine were about 40 inches, 37 inches, and 34 inches tall. Very rustic. They have little knobs and bark on them. I just love that rustic look. Then I took a scrap piece of 1x6 and I'm screwing the branches onto the 1x6 from the bottom up using my drill and some deck screws. So I'm just staggering these, uh, one in the front, two in the back, and just staggering the heights to give this piece some interest. Next, I found a spot in my garden where I wanted this feature and I dug out a really shallow hole about the same size as my one by six, put the piece inside the hole and then covered it up with mulch so it stays nice and firm. 
Next, I'm just using regular white glue. You could also use crazy glue for this project, which I would have preferred, but I couldn't find any that I had on hand. So I'm just using what I have. White glue seems to work perfectly fine. And I'm placing the birdhouses on top, one on top of each of the tree branches. Then after that, you can just decorate these to your heart's content, just match the look of your garden, match your aesthetic. So I'm taking some raffia ribbon and I'm tying it around each of the tree branches like this. And then I also um, am putting some white glue on top of the roofs of these birdhouses and I'm attaching some moss. I do love the look of moss. Uh, in springtime and summertime and I think any bits of green you can add to your your decor especially your outdoor decor is always a good thing I also found these little faux butterflies at the dollar store these were from Dollarama and I'm attaching them with white glue to my birdhouses as well and here is the finished birdhouse feature I think these turned out so sweet they look really rustic and cute in our front garden and they were so easy to make plus they hardly cost me anything at all Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed these garden DIY ideas using dollar store items. Let me know down in that comment section below which of these DIYs was your favorite. I would love to hear. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more DIY and decor ideas.